Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Another wonderful learning day and in today's session, once again, we have got 20 latest questions on AZ900. And today, I am going to enhance a lot of your Azure concepts by taking questions that come in AZ900 exam with a lot of variations. And in these kind of questions, you will be presented with multiple solutions for an exact same question and you have to pick the right answer. And friends, this really challenges your knowledge and makes so many exam takers confused, resulting in losing precious marks. And to top up your learning, I have got lot of Microsoft documentation so that not only you can validate the answers, but you can also do some self-learning. And in case you are joining us here for the first time, please note that we have already covered 265 latest questions. So please do not miss to watch previous parts of this series. Each question is important and you do not want to miss any of those before your examination. Links to all the previous parts are shared in the description box. So let's gear up and prepare for AZ900 exam. So let's begin part 15 with question number 266. The question says that your company developers intend to deploy a large number of custom virtual machines on a weekly basis. They will also be removing these virtual machines during the same week it was deployed. 60% of the virtual machines have Windows Server 2016 installed while the other 40% has Ubuntu Linux installed. Now you are required to make sure that the administrative effort needed for this process is reduced by employing a suitable Azure service. The solution given here is that you recommend the use of Azure reserved virtual machines instances. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no because Azure Reserved Virtual Machine has nothing to do with deployment of the resources. Now let's check out the other two variations of the same question and then we will also get to know the correct answer. So coming up question number 267, the question exactly the same. This time the solution says that you recommend the use of Microsoft Managed Desktop. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And once again, this is an incorrect solution. Now let's check out the third variation, question number 268. Question once again exactly the same. The solution however this time says that you recommend use of Azure Dev Test Labs. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this time my friends, this is a correct solution. And why do you think Azure Dev Test Lab is the correct solution? Let's find out in this documentation. Here you can see it says what is Azure Dev Test Lab and it's clearly mentioned that Azure Dev Test Lab is a service for easily creating, using and managing infrastructure as a service or IAS, virtual machines and platform as a service environments in labs. Lab offer pre-configured bases and artifacts for creating virtual machines and Azure Resource Manager templates for creating environments like Azure Web Apps and SharePoint Forms. And the most important section of this documentation is that Azure DevTest Lab is a service for easily creating, using and managing infrastructure as a service, virtual machines and platform as a service. In our question as well, we were asked to tell a service in Azure which will help the administrator to spin up virtual machines based on Windows Server or Ubuntu Linux. And also my friends, if you remember the question correctly, it asked us to deploy large number of custom virtual machines and also to remove these virtual machines during the same week. That's why Azure Dev Test Lab is the best service to use here because it enables you to quickly spin up virtual machines and also get rid of them. I hope you understood why we have chosen Azure Dev Test Lab as the answer to this question. Now let's move on to another set of the questions. Question number 269 says that you have been informed by your superiors of the company intentions to automate server deployment to Azure. There is however some concern that administrative credentials could be uncovered during this process and you are required to make sure that during the deployment, the administrative credentials are encrypted using a suitable Azure solution. The solution given here is, you recommend the use of Azure Information Protection. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And in this case, my friends, Azure Information Protection is not the correct solution. That's why no is the correct answer. And this is because Azure Information Protection is a cloud-based solution that enables organizations 
to discover, classify and protect documents and emails by applying labels to the content. So now let's check out the other variation of the same question. Question number 270, exactly the same question. The solution however says that you recommend the use of Azure multi-factor authentication better known as MFA. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And once again, MFA or Azure multi-factor authentication is not the correct service to encrypt your administrative credentials. That's why we have chosen a no. So what is the correct service to use? Let's find out in the question number 271 question. Once again, exactly the same. The solution, however, this time says that you recommend the use of Azure keyboard. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no. And this time, my friends, this is a correct service when it comes to secure your credentials or passwords. And of course, you can validate the answer on this Microsoft documentation. It says that Azure Key Vault is a cloud service for securely storing and accessing secrets. What is a secret? Well, a secret is anything that you want to tightly control access to, such as API keys, passwords, certificates or cryptographic keys. And that's exactly what was the requirement in our question. That's why we have chosen Azure Key Vault as the correct answer. Now let's move on to another set of question. Question number 272 says that you are required to deploy an artificial intelligence solution in Azure. You want to make sure that you are able to build test deploy predictive analytics for the solution. The solution given here is that you should make use of Azure Cosmos DB. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this time, my friends, this solution or Azure Cosmos DB has nothing to do with artificial intelligence. That's why we have chosen no for this question. And let me give you brief on Azure Cosmos DB, a very important Azure service. Azure Cosmos DB is a fully managed NoSQL database for modern app development. And also, my friends, Azure Cosmos DB provides you with single digit millisecond response time and automatic and instant scalability, guaranteeing speed at any scale. And here comes the second variation of the same question. Question exactly the same. Solution, however, says that you should make use of Azure Machine Learning Studio. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this time, of course, this is a correct solution. And in case you want to learn more on Machine Learning Studio, this is the Microsoft documentation. Links to all the documentation is right there in the description box. Coming up next is question number 274. The question says that your company's infrastructure includes a number of business units that needs a large number of various Azure resources for everyday operation. The resources required by each business unit are identical. Also note that you are required to sanction a strategy to create Azure resources automatically. The solution given is that you recommend the use of Azure API management service to be included in the strategy. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And in this case, my friend, Azure API management service is not the correct service. That's why we have chosen no for this question. And why this is so? Because Azure API Management Service is a way to create and manage customer API for existing backend services. But in our case, we have been asked to sanction a strategy to create Azure resources automatically. And this service here is not matching this business requirement. So let's jump on to see the other variations of the same question and let's find out the correct service. And here comes question number 275, another variation of the same question, but with different solution. Solution says that you recommend the use of management groups to be included in the strategy. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And this time, once again, it's an incorrect service. That's why we have chosen no for this question. And this is because Azure management groups support Azure role based access control for all resources, access and role definitions. And Azure management groups have nothing to do with creation of Azure resources automatically. Now let's check out the third variation of the same question. This time the solution is saying that you recommend the use of Azure resource manager templates to be included in the strategy. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And this time, of course, this is a correct service. That's why yes for this question. So what are Azure Resource Manager? Well, Azure Resource Manager is the deployment and management service for Azure. It provides a management layer that enables you to create, update and delete resources in your Azure account. And you can also use management features like access controls, logs and tags to secure and organize your resources after deployment. 
And friends, trust me, it's a wonderful service from Azure in case you want to deploy a large number of resources or in case you want to automate the deployment of the resources, Azure Resource Manager Templates is the service to go for. Coming up next is question number 277. It says that your company is planning to migrate all their virtual machines to an Azure pay as you go subscription. The virtual machines are currently hosted on Hyper-V host in a data center. You are required to make sure that the intended Azure solution uses the correct expenditure model. And the solution given is that you should recommend the use of elastic expenditure model. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this of course is an incorrect solution because there is nothing like elastic expenditure model. However, elasticity is in itself a characteristic of cloud computing. Now let's move on to see the second variation of the same question. Exactly the same question. The solution however says that you should recommend the use of scalable expenditure model. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And once again, this is an incorrect solution because scalability expenditure model, there is nothing like that. Now let's find out the correct solution. Here comes the third variation of the same question. The solution this time says that you should recommend the use of operational expenditure model. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And of course, this is a correct solution. That's why yes is the correct answer. And this is because operating expenditure are ongoing cost of doing business. Consuming cloud services in a pay as you go model could qualify as operating expenditure. And now comes another set of questions. Question number 280 says that your company Active Directory Forest includes thousands of user accounts. You have been informed that all network resources will be migrated to Azure. Thereafter, the on-premises data center will be retired. Now you are required to employ a strategy that reduces the effect on users once the planned migration has been completed. The solution given is that you plan to require Azure Multi-Factor Authentication MFA. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And friends, Azure Multi-Factor Authentication is the incorrect service for this business case. That's why no is the correct answer. So what's the correct service to use? Let's find out in the question number 281. Exactly the same question. Solution however says that you plan to sync all the Active Directory user accounts to Azure Active Directory or Azure AD. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And of course, this is a correct solution. So by syncing all the Active Directory user accounts to Azure AD, the users will be able to access their resources seamlessly after the migration without any major disruptions. And this will reduce the impact of migration on the users and minimize the need for them to change their existing login credentials. So that's why this is the correct solution. Moving on to the question number 282, it says that you are planning to migrate a company to Azure. Each of the company's numerous divisions will have an administrator in place to manage the Azure resources used by their respective division. Now you want to make sure that the Azure deployment that you employ allows for Azure to be segmented for the divisions while keeping the administrative effort to a minimum. The solution given is that you plan to make use of several Azure Active Directory or Azure AD directories. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this my friends is an incorrect solution. So let's check out the second variation of the same question. Question number 283, exactly same question. The solution says that you plan to make use of Azure Resource Manager. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And of course, this time this is a correct solution. And here on your screen is question number 284. It says that your company has an Azure Active Directory environment. Users occasionally connect to Azure AD via internet and you have been tasked with making sure that the users who connect to the Azure AD via internet from an unidentified IP address are automatically encouraged to change the passwords. The solution given is that you configure the use of Azure AD privileged identity management. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this is an incorrect solution. That's why we have picked no for this question. And the reason is my friends that Azure AD Privilege Identity Management is a service in Azure Active Directory that enables you to manage, control and monitor access to important resources in your organization. These resources include resources in Azure AD, Azure and other Microsoft online services such as Microsoft 365 or Microsoft Intune. 
And in case you want to read more on Azure AD Privilege Identity Management, this is the Microsoft documentation. Exactly what I just told you, a good documentation, a video is also given along with the reasons why you should use this service. The link is right there in the description box. So now let's try to find out what is the correct solution for this business case. And for that, here comes question number 285. Question exactly the same. However, this time the solution says that you configure the use of Azure AD identity protection. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this time, of course, my friend, this is a correct solution. That's why we have picked yes for this question. So today I presented you with a lot of questions with multiple variations. In many previous parts, more such questions were presented. So many variations, similar questions, confusing options. Well, Microsoft will do everything to confuse you or should I say everything to test your knowledge. So friends, the way I prepared for these examinations is to just remember the correct answer or you can also say just remember the correct variation. For example, when the question is asking about securing passwords or certificates, always keep Azure Keyword in your mind. Another example could be when the question is asking about some global database with millisecond response time or some database which is good with JSON style storing, it is always undoubtedly Azure Cosmos DB. So as I say, just focus on the right answer, understand the concept why it is right and nothing can then divert you from the correct answer and also you will never lose precious marks. And friends, if you like this tip, then please do not close the video before you press the like button and subscribe to the channel in case you are new here today and share our videos with your loved ones. After all, knowledge is the best gift that you can give to anyone. And with that wonderful thought, I would say that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.